Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of my Elden Ring Let's Play. So, last time we reached this uh, amazing underground area called Siofa River Well. Um, it is probably one of my favorite areas in the game for looks and visuals. Uh, when it comes to gameplay, you will see soon enough that um, there, there are a few problems with it. But that's something we'll we'll tackle later, uh, as we talk and explore this area. For now, um, let's head up here because there's actually something we can do if we go up here, and we'll slowly make our way there. Uh, I believe if we go inside right now, there shouldn't be anything in our way, except or that and if you interact with that we'll get a little hint about what we have to do I don't believe there's a boss fight until later on although I could be mistaken and you can see there's a lot um, up there and uh, I actually no I was gonna say that's an item but it isn't, but there is a fog gate right there, and that's actually a, f a boss fog gate because yes, you can actually go up there <laughs> this entire area is explorable and um, as you can see, it's quite it's quite big uh, and quite quite expensive, y you'd think it is well within like the realm of uh, Stormvale Castle and you know how large that was so um, you can start to get a feel for how massive this game is in terms of content uh, and, uh, oh no, you can't actually interact with this. Why is it always dog? Yeah, <laughs> wait. How did this guy die? Oh. Why did you do that? <laughs> Why? I'm, I'm not gonna question it. Uh, let, let's get on, on, uh, on Torrent. Since... Uh, the stage is quite large. Anyway, um, I've also tweaked the audio again a little bit, mostly because I'm I've been getting problems with with uh, audio levels resetting. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, okay, well, mm. so I I actually had a plan to introduce this episode and like the next few episodes I was going to introduce them in a specific way, but I didn't actually check. So now, um, I'm kind of debating where, where I just spoil uh, what we have to do or not, because, well, I don't really know how else to, to do it. So let's just interact with this and see if anything happens. Alright, alright. Okay, so I guess this is how you, you're supposed to interact uh, with this area. Basically, you'd, you'd be coming from over there, you'd see this pillar, try to interact with it and light the flame. And as you can see, it also lit a flame on the stairway. And there's um, there's eight pillars. Uh, we'll we'll need to gather all eight or light up all eight of them in order for something to happen. Which you probably have guessed is probably a boss fight. Okay, these enemies are relatively tough. Never mind. I guess the first time I came here, they were a bit tougher. Don't worry though, when it comes to attacking, those enemies do not mess around. I, I promise you that. And uh, I believe there is a, a pillar over here, and if there isn't, there's at least... Yeah, there's a few items. Arterial leaf. Okay, that's not exactly what I expected. <laughs> oh, inverted hawk heater shield. Um, I don't believe there's anything too important uh, when it comes to lore. Uh, Medium-sized metal shield, whatever. The inverted hawk is the emblem of the company of slaves ordered to explore the eternal city. Oh. oh and Okay, there's an item over there. We also didn't pick that one up. Actually, no, we, we couldn't have, because it's, uh, yeah, it's over, over the ledge, or over the wall, rather. Um, 
Company of Slaves. I've, okay, that's actually something that I've never heard about. Uh, Company of Slaves exploring the Eternal City. You can see those walls are also quite snowy. Or at least they have ice coating them, probably because it's cold down here. Uh, yeah, a slave company, that's... I'm, I'm honestly not sure what that's about. I hope we get a, a few extra clues about that somewhere. Uh, probably the bodies we see scattered on the floor. Uh, if we see any, I'm not sure if we have, but if we do see any, then quite quite likely that's the uh, the the company that they're talking about. Look at this view, man. It's I, in the past two episodes, I've probably stopped and said that like five, six times. But yeah, it's it's a wonderful area. It, I think they really nailed it when it comes to underground areas with with this one. Okay, this is actually not something we can interact with, but we can definitely pick up the item we saw from up there. Uh, it's down here. Oh, why? Huh? Why did he not die in one hit? I remember Cookbook Six. I do believe we were missing that one. Um. Uh, where where do I store cookbooks? Where do they end up? Over here, right? Yep. Uh. Okay. Not, uh, no, we're actually missing four and five. This one allows us to craft preserving boluses. Whatever those are, uh, you can probably go to the crafting list and alleviate scarlet rot buildup and cures rot. Okay, that's actually huge. That is huge. I I can assure you of that. Um, scarlet rot buildup is honestly one of the worst parts in this game. Okay, chill out, bro. Crab eggs. Great. Um, let me open up the map here. I don't want to say there's a specific way you have or order you have to light these things up in, but if you exp wait, what? Is this not okay? It's there's there's no specific way for you to light up uh, those pillars, but. I think if you take a very methodical approach to uh, to lighting them up, uh, you'll save yourself the trouble of backtracking and thinking, have I explored uh, this area or not? Because uh, it, it's not a confusing area down here, but um, it's definitely not uh, the easiest to explore because of that. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow the other path in the moment. I can see another pillar. And I'm, I want to go, go inside here, I think. Uh, actually, it's, I do not. Because... This isn't what I expected it to be. It's over there. Okay, I think that's the one. Alright, then we'll take this other path first. See, see where that leads us. Okay, let's hop on torrent. to explore so don't don't worry I'm not sure how long it's gonna take for us to tackle this area we are well um, into the uh, I don't want to say mid game but sort of mid game level range uh, and we're still exploring uh, stuff like this it's obviously it's a, it's a full completionist playthrough but I've already played the game so I know exactly oh I know exactly what, what order to take.
And I also know how to tackle these enemies now. Uh, so it, it makes it a lot faster. I wonder if there's a way to like see the enemies before they spawn. Okay, that makes two. Um, there are two bosses in, in this area. Four or five, I think, if you count uh, like the, the area above this as, um, as the same area, which it isn't, but technically, I guess, like, it should be, like, from, um, from simply looking at it, it should be the same area, but the game clearly separates the two, uh, so I wouldn't say it is the same area. But there's two bosses that we'll fight in, in these few first episodes. Um, the first one, I'm not too worried about, but I do think it's... Right. Alright, let's not mess with that anymore. The first one, I'm not too worried about. Also... I'm not gonna take this portal right now. I'm gonna use the portals later because um, I know where they end up, and I know it's not anywhere um, that we can't go by just walking, uh, except for the one portal that leads uh, slightly up into the middle level. So around uh, around there, I think, where my head is, maybe. No, no, it'll definitely be a lot higher, but. It's it's fine. It's oh god. I am running out of healing though, and uh, I I don't want to rest if I can help it. Because if I don't rest, I know exactly where I've been. Okay, so yeah, we've been over there, and this first aqueduct, which doesn't lead anywhere, except for that broken place, is the, is the, I guess the line separating what we've already explored. I guess that's a good way to think about it. And yeah, th that second aqueduct, or pillars, I guess, they, they do look like Roman aqueducts or similar. But but um, or they do remind me of that. Maybe they don't look like like them, but they do remind me of that. Um, that those se second set of pillars. Um, that's where I was thinking. Oh, and I'm getting a phone call. So give me a moment. All right, I'm back. I do apologize for that. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but I do believe I was talking about how those pillars were uh, very similar or remind me of. Roman architecture, which is fine, <laughs> or it was not not fine. It's um, it's uh, I guess it makes sense. But I'm not sure if it's true or not that they do look like them. Anyway, that that phone. I keep getting phone calls every time I'm recording. I mean, it it is just it is normal that I, I mean I talk a lot on the phone. So, oh no, oh no, what have I? Okay. That's uh, not what I expect it to be, but I'm fine. Um, I do get a lot of phone calls usually. Uh, it's just something we don't trade messages in, in a lot, and like my my family group, we uh, we do have a, a family WhatsApp group, but we usually just call each other if we need to ask something. I mean, it's just it just saves time, I guess. So. Yeah, I do end up getting a lot of phone calls when uh, when uh, I'm home and and uh, I can chat. Oh, there's ghost cloverwort here. I didn't know about that. Uh, not that it really matters since uh, we don't use it a whole lot, but good to know. Good to know. Oh, up and up and up. I 
there is an item down here, which I'm gonna get off my horse for. It's a storm sword key. Now, um... There's that guy staring into nothing. And you can clearly see there is a, a whole other area that we can't access. Uh, there's an interesting way to go there. Now, I, I highly recommend you you keep it in mind if you not play the game and if you're not planning to. I highly recommend you, you keep this in mind because uh, we'll go back there in, in uh, another episode sometime in the future. I'm not sure when I'll, I'll do it. I mean, I might, I might even forget because it is optional content, so... And I don't remember uh, exactly where to to go for it. Okay, we jump up. First time I was here, I was actually taking a long time to get back because I didn't know how. Because if you... If you go here, you, you have to jump down to the, the Spirit Spring. I, and I didn't know. Oh, 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 please don't. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, you can also get up here. I didn't know about that. Although that poses the question, how do we get down? Oh, I guess we just get down here. Um, first time I was up there, I didn't know how to get down because I didn't know Spirit Springs uh, like cancelled your your fall damage, so I was trying to slowly get down from the edges of the rocks, and uh, obviously that wasn't working. Okay, yeah, I definitely do not remember this area being so easy, so I'm, I'm glad, I'm definitely glad. Uh, just makes it a lot more um, interesting. Hmm, I, I do believe that's one that you light up, so we'll be going there. I do wonder how this place looks ray traced, but I don't want to turn it on. Okay, we'll have to pick one and kill them. Just barely, not one shutting them anymore for some reason. Okay, we got a lot of healing back. Oh, this one I did. I wonder if it's um, if I'm not like fully charging my attack. Ah, no. Oh, no, I think I know what it is. Um, I'm not sure if that is a thing in, in Hell Ring, but I'm gonna assume it is, because that's the only explanation I have. Um, but in Dark Souls, the first time you hit an enemy, if they're not aggro on you, it's sort of like a, a surprise attack mechanic, where you get a damage buff to your first strike. Um on that enemy, and, and I, I assume that's what what is at play here. The first time you attack someone, you do more damage. Also, that place up there, we'll be going there as well, but... That one is way, way, way late, later in the game. I've actually not done that boss, I think. Um, have I? Damn, I don't remember. Um, no, no, I don't think I have. Also, uh, that one attack you saw that did 911 damage. Yep. Yeah, they, okay, I'm fairly certain they made this area easier. Because I don't remember uh, these fellas being so. Uh, yeah.
being so easy to kill. And, uh, or, okay, not so easy to kill in the sense of, like, damage, but more, uh, in the sense that, um, their arrows don't just, like, immediately snipe you. another one of those pillars up here yeah like I'm fairly certain back when I first played this most of these if not all of them had um, had like the, the blue arrow in their bows and they charged it they always charged it so you'd be getting sniped from like five different places and the charge arrow does a lot more damage than the normal arrow so even rushing uh, anyone was basically impossible how many have we lit up I have lost count and where are we okay we're still okay there's still this whole area to explore all right that's 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 fine Yeah, I can see another one over there, and I know there's at least two or three over there. Plus, whatever I've missed. Hmm. Dwelling arrow. Honestly, uh, I don't know. I feel like the loot in this area is... And in, in a lot of, of uh, areas in Elden Ring, the loot is... They, they've done loot in a way that you, ex you you know what to expect when you go somewhere. You, you start to understand the... And I think this is the portal that I do want to take. Uh, but I'm not going to take it right now. They, you start to expect, or know what to expect from the loot. Which is, in a way, it, it, it's interesting because you start to learn where you have to go to get certain things and you, you as soon as you see something in the world you, you go okay well usually those types of areas have you know materials or they have smithing stones in the case of mines but there's also something to be said about how this area you know as big and interesting as it is all you get from like exploring are dwelling arrows for the most part, or mushrooms or arterial leaves. And sure, arterial leaves are used for some of the most um, powerful buff items, I guess. But they're not really something you can farm, since most of them are like just, you know, standing there for like pick, pick up, but there's just one of them. Uh, so you really don't get a whole lot. Uh, ah, okay, that's the place I wanted to go. But I'm not gonna go in, actually, because I, I just remember there's another way you can go in, and you we may as well just do it that way. But yeah, I mean, I think the loot in, in like, Elden Ring and stuff, I think it'll be... It, it will be good if it ha... Oh, there's a plant there, okay. Fair enough. We can probably throw a pot at it. It'd be funny if, if the loot... Um, was more weapons and armor and less, you know, arrows. And I understand Elden Ring couldn't fill its world with, like, exclusively weapons and armor. But at the same time, I wish it could. Because, I don't know, it, it feels feels weird that all you're getting are arrows and you don't really use arrows. And even if you did use arrows, well, what's, like, What's 20 arrows going to do for you? I've been thinking of doing a, a boat playthrough eventually, but... I, I After what I've seen people do in boat playthroughs... 
um, I know that you need way more arrows than you get from the, from the ground. So there's this whole debate on whether it's even worth to pick them up. Like, yeah, it'll save you maybe one out of like I don't know 15 grind uh, resets where you're like going back to to a side of grace to reset the enemy so you can farm them again or so uh, whatever item you're picking up from the ground respawns. Uh, and I don't know, it just doesn't feel very worthwhile. Golden runes and smithing stones. Well, mines always have smithing stones, and I feel like it's interesting, as I said. Specific places have specific things that you know you're gonna find. Uh, catacombs have glow warts, and places like this, and other like unique locations in the open world, because as, as much as this looks unique, it is very much uh, following the philosophy of the open world design where uh, enemies are, sc are scattered in locations that, you know, for the most part, they just highlight important architecture in the zone and not exactly, they don't exactly provide uh, a challenge on their own. If you go to, say, Stormvale or Raya Lucaria, if you go to, to like, any location there, the enemy pla placement is clearly meant for you to... to uh, tackle them on in a specific way for a specific challenge um, much like old Dark Souls games and you know both of these philosophies are fine I'm not gonna say they aren't and you know I've kind of trailed off a bit from my original argument but what I'm trying to say is if if you design a place like this and you you fill it up with like arrows on the ground or random junk materials. It, it it does take a bit away. And we do <laughs> for some reason there is a merchant down here. And I, I find that to be very cool. We'll talk to him just a bit. Let me just finish my, my argument there. Um we can listen to his uh music in the background. Uh once you design uh an area I think in a way that this one is designed. Uh, I I feel like um, you should you should like not fill it up with garbage items that will be used uh, like consumables. I guess don't fill it up with consumables that nobody's gonna use unless you're doing like a specific build. I don't. I'm not trying to be like the the big two two handed weapon. Pro um, purist or elitist or whatever but but uh, let's be honest like most people just do use either big weapons or a weapon and shield or a weapon and yeah, or two weapons with bleed or whatever they don't use bows a, a whole lot uh, and I guess you could you could make a point for a character that uses a bow uh, on the offhand and switches to it for like specific scenarios in which case you probably won't be crafting a whole lot of arrows anyway so you can afford to just use the ones you find on the, f on the floor or on the ground. That is a, a, a valid point, but... Uh, I I think you'd probably be better off just not designing um, drops like that. You know, just put things on the floor that are actually useful for everyone. Especially in a place like this. Like, for mines, you just you place a bunch of smithing stones, that's great. Uh, for catacombs, you place a bunch of glaive wards and all that stuff. That's great as well. Uh, even if nobody's going to use a glo glove ward, or in my, in my case, I'm not. That's fine because that's you know that's one location that you expect them to be at. Uh, you expect materials in in these types of open world locations with like unique uh, unique landmarks. Um, that's fine. You know you expect to have materials between them. But at least make the materials that I think everyone should use. Make arrows perhaps be something you get uh, more easily through crafting. Or, yeah, just like, replace all the arrows with crafting materials and use those crafting materials for different things, I guess. Because getting arrows, it's just... just doesn't work for me. Because <laughs> I'm not going to use them. Oh, a customer. Okay, this doesn't actually sell, say much. Okay, we got soap. Um, 
I'm gonna buy the cookbook, which gives me dappled or dappled cured meat. Okay. A larval tear. Do I want one? I don't think I do. This one gives me soap, oil pot, and rope oil pot. And um, yeah, I'll buy I'll buy your stone sword keys. Why not? I'll buy two of them. And uh, I till next time. Yeah. And I'm I'm gonna leave a marker there, just in case. Just notice he has a little tent made out of leaves. Hefty beast bone. Yeah, that was a lot tougher than I thought in terms of HP. I was thinking it was gonna get one shot, especially because I, I set it on fire, but uh, it didn't. Smithing Stone 4, that's great. Is there any of those stones we have light up? Nope. Okay, well, I'm not gonna kill the rest of these flowers, not worth it. Don't wanna get poison built up. Huh. But yeah, I mean, eh, I'm not gonna carry on with that argument, but um, I still enjoy, very much enjoy the, this this area. I still very much enjoy looting stuff uh, in the Elden Ring world. I, I just feel like sometimes uh, there's a lot of like loot that I'm not gonna use, and I I get excited because I see a shiny, and uh, and uh, it's not really anything I'm gonna use, and. Um, on another topic, speaking of, of seeing a shiny, um, I've actually been following uh, um, a Pokemon uh, Let's Play, sort of. Um, I'm, I've been looking at the, or I've been watching the videos for a, a guy named Pokemon Challenges. I think his name is Sean. Uh, so, in the channel name is Pokemon Challenges. And I've been watching his videos on um, on Pokemon Fusion. Now, I've been thinking, you know, it would be somewhat interesting to record a Pokemon series. Um, it is definitely something that um, I would enjoy recording more than I would enjoy playing on my own. It's another one of those cases. Um, I I'm not sure. If I would play Pokemon Fusion, no, I've been play I've been looking at him playing the game, and I honestly don't really see a a um, see myself playing it, or at least not uh, in the same vein. Because one thing about that guy is he plays um, in Nuzlocke, and or he plays with Nuzlocke rules. And there isn't really a Nuzlocke mode, I guess. He plays with Nuzlocke rules, which are specific rules that make the game a lot harder. He even goes a step further and does hardcore Nuzlocke, which makes the game a lot harder. Very crazy hard. Um, so, uh, the sort of the fun that, uh, that I, I've, I've, um, I've been thinking about, like, re recording it, might come from the fact that he's doing a specific challenge and not from like the way I imagine that I would play it which means you know maybe it won't be as fun as I think it, it will be to record not sure just my theory um, but yeah I mean if anyone wants to see a specific game do let me know be a Pokemon or all the other games I've mentioned so far one game I'm for absolutely certain gonna bring to the channel now, um, aside from you know the other strategy games which I've mentioned and um, 
I've mostly failed to learn properly or well in the case of Warhammer I've actually kind of zoned out a bit of it because uh, the game doesn't run too well on my PC and I, I would like to run it at near near max settings simply because it's a very pretty game and all, all, all those battles are extremely cool to watch. I like to watch them with like good quality. I wouldn't want them uh, slightly lower quality. And uh, 1440p is extremely hard to run on that game. So uh, yeah, no, I'm not sure how, how that's gonna work out. I, I probably shouldn't have upgraded to 1440p, but I don't really regret it so much as I don't. Uh, I honestly I don't see a difference because when I go back to 1080p on this monitor I do see a difference but I I don't think it's as much of a jump as people say, say it is. 1440Hz uh, or yeah or yeah 144Hz actually not 1440 uh, 144Hz um, which my monitor also is in my opinion it's the same thing. I've noticed a huge difference when playing competitive shooters like Valorant, which I play casually, I guess, but it's still a competitive shooter. I've played Valorant with, with my buddies a lot. Uh, well, not really a lot, I'd say probably like, I have like 30, 40 competitive games on record. Um, but I've played, with, uh, I've played that with them and uh, I wouldn't say um, I would buy a monitor just for it, but it definitely made the game a lot better to play and a lot more enjoyable. For other games though, I don't really see a need uh, for like the upgrade. I, I, maybe one thing I do enjoy is the fact that my monitor is a lot larger now, so because it's a 27 inch. It, it was actually, I bought it as soon as I started recording, which is or, or no, not since I started recording, just like a week before I started recording uh, the, uh, this series, so... I've not played Elden Ring in 1080p in a while, but I don't think there is like any major difference that would... that would like... justify the fact that, you know, some games, some games just run like crap now. The... I mean... I want to say that's the case, but it, that's a bit disingenuous. Some games do look very pretty and they do run well enough. Like Elden Ring, for all intents and purposes, does run uh, well. I'm getting 60 FPS in this area and that's the, the FPS cap. They don't, they don't unlock the FPS unless you install a mod for it, but then you couldn't play online. And you know, for this series I do intend to, to be online, so... Uh, yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is. I, I, I do. I am a bit on the fence about it. I would definitely recommend it if you have the money for a, like a better PC. I would definitely recommend you go for 1440p, even if it's a bit harder to run the games. 1440p and 144hz is... Oh, God. Is, in my opinion, like, very good. Die there. I'm gonna pop this. Yep, imagine this, but it happens throughout the entire place. Um Cause that's what I what I felt like my my first day one experience was in this game. Imagine, yeah, like they keep sniping you like crazy. 
I wonder if it's if the, I, I I think they changed the logic. I, I I fully believe they've changed the logic for for those those enemies, and they now take a little bit longer to charge up, or they don't charge up at all if they don't think it's required. Because before I'm fairly certain they would they would charge up uh, every time, which means you know. While it might be a bad situation for them to charge up when you're rushing like one or two, when there's like five of them and they all charge the arrows, you're gonna die. And that was a miserable experience. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, I guess this area is a lot, a lot better now. Maybe they've also changed the, the later areas in the game to make them a bit more, uh, I wouldn't say accessible, more like. Less of a pain, let's be honest. Less of a pain. Um, I think I know where this leads. I'm not going to use my, uh, my my stone sword key right now, but I, I think I remember where this leads, and I don't want to do it right now. Well, let me... Yeah, it leads right, up, right below Kaelid. Um, I mean... Nah, 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 nah. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Not right now. I, I don't think I I have the levels for it. However, from down here we can actually see, or for yeah, from down here we can see a few things. First, we can see that area which leads to a very iconic fight in that ca cavern. A very iconic fight because people hate it. Um, I actually ha had a decently easy time of it, but I agree that it it is quite hard. Um, all of this, while you can't, like, be inside all of this, this isn't just, this isn't hollow with corridors and stuff, there's a lot of stuff up there you can, you can be on and, and explore and, you know, over there, I think, over there, uh, it's all places you'll be able to explore later, we can't, we can't go through it on our first run through this place, it, it's just not how it works. Uh, I wish we could, but at the same time, I also, I also think it's a good idea that you come back here, because there's a limited amount of uh, handcrafted underground areas. I just rested. Oh my god, I, I just rested. Why have I done this? Why? done this did I explain why I'm trying to remember because I remember I mentioned earlier the 911 damage where it was coming from, but I, I think I cut off and like went on a tangent as usual. Um, the 911 damage is from is from um, did we light this one up. It even it didn't even light this one up, even though we were just here. Uh, if you time an attack well, you you also get a damage boost. Oh my god. And I do believe this is probably the seventh or the eighth uh, pillar. I think it's the seventh. And I've not been counting, but I, I think there's only two other locations we've not yet explored. Okay, it was the last one. Power gather somewhere in the horned remains. Okay, so we just have two little areas left to explore down here. And then one big-ish area not really big it's more like just an optional arena which is actually uh, where we're gonna go first oh and we're, we're running on 45 minutes so i think this may be a good time to uh to call it a day 
Oh, no, please don't. Or call it an episode. But first, we're going to explore back here. Wait, does this leave where I think it does? No, it, it didn't. I wonder if, if, if uh, these places with the rune arcs and stuff are part of, like, the slave... Um, the slave uh, expedition that came down here. It would make sense if they were, like, hiding out from all those ancestral... Uh, Big guys, I guess. I don't, know, I don't know their names. Have we been down there? Can we even go down there? I don't remember if we can. Oh wait, I just remember we were running on 45 minutes, but uh, that's counting the phone call that I'm gonna edit out, so... Uh, I'm not sure how how long we've been recording for them, but I'm gonna assume it's well over 30 minutes. We might have even reached the 40 minute mark. Um, so I think it's a good time to stop, but let's just get that one final item. Oh, anything here? I don't believe there's any invisible walls on here, but it doesn't hurt to check. Nope. And down. Oh, might have to get on torrent for this. I wonder what's over here. I know there is an item, but I'm not sure which which item it is. Some sort key. Oh, and rip. All right. Well, I think this is a good wrapping up point. We've explored most of the area. Uh, there's two places I want to go explore uh, in here. Um, not sure how I get to one of them, and I'm not even sure if I can get to it right now. I'm going to try to find it. Uh, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a bit of a, a weird one, because I, was, I kept talking about random topics and, you know, switching to another topic and... My train of thought, I feel like, just reflecting on it, I feel like it wasn't too coherent. And I was rambling on about random stuff that doesn't really make any sense. But it's better to have something to talk about than not. Because I've, I've, I noticed that in the past, like, three episodes or so, uh, there's a lot of moments where I just don't have anything to say. And I'm just, like, I'm being, I'm being very boring. So at least with this, you can hear me talk about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully that's fun. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.